Welcome to Women's Leadership Podcast, showing you how to influence people, improve your performance, and advance your career. Brought to you by women's leadership and career expert Sabrina Braum and womensleadershipsuccess.com. Here's your chance to meet women trendsetters leading the way to success, accomplishment, and balance in business and life. No matter if you're a manager, CEO, or entrepreneur, join Sabrina for coaching and no-nonsense advice to improve your career and bottom line. This is Sabrina Brom with SabrinaBrom.com. In this segment of Women's Leadership Podcast, we will be discussing how 90% of all women feel insecure financially, and today we're going to talk about why and what you can do about it. And our guest today is Renee Amachayev of Wachovia Securities. Welcome, Renee. Hi, Sabrina. I, can you tell us a little bit about your background and, and um, how you became really interested in working with women financially? Sure. Well, I guess um, probably the best way to start is the fact that I am a woman and I do earn money and I have been managing my own money since I was uh, probably about 13 years old. I uh, had the very good fortune of having a mother that believed that a woman should be independently financially secure and uh, she taught me this at a really young age and gave me that responsibility at a really young age. And as a result, that led to a career in uh, finance. And I've been a financial advisor since the late 90s, uh, working with some of uh, Wall Street's uh, largest firms, Merrill Lynch, Smith Barney, and currently Wachovia Securities. And uh, tell us a little bit about what makes women so insecure financially. I was really surprised to hear that 90% of women feel that way. You know, it's uh, it's an interesting question, and I've been trying to understand that myself because, to be quite honest with you, I really don't think that women uh, should feel financially insecure. Um, I think that what a lot of it has to do with is women feel that they maybe don't understand um, financial investment information, and as a result of that, they may have uh, some fear about actually pursuing investments. And um, I just feel that, you know, women certainly have the skills that it requires to be able to be good investors. They just need some place probably where they can go to ask those questions and uh, get information in an environment that feels uh, safe. So um, how do women start? What if women need to start doing in order to get that information? Well, I think one of the things that women probably need to understand in the, right up front is um, that women are really in a unique position today, um, more so than they ever have been in the past. Um, when you take a look at the statistics that are out there, uh, the financial power of women in the United States is actually pretty formidable. About 62% of women earn half or more of their family's income and over 80% of women control their family budget. Um, I thought it was really interesting that I recently read a statistic that about 40% of the people with incomes of more than half a million dollars are women. And uh, when you take a look at how uh, women are actually outpacing men in terms of income growth, you know, I have to stop and think that um, the fear of maybe not having enough money is not necessarily that rational anymore when you take a look at what's going on in our society today. That, that makes a lot of sense. And at the same time, uh, what I've found as an executive coach that whether women are making $10 an hour or $300,000 a year, it seems like there's so many women that go paycheck to play, paycheck and don't have a clear plan of how to create wealth or assets or even prepare for their retirement. Absolutely, and I see that quite often in my practice. Um, a lot of people will come to me thinking that my role is to uh, help them not only make investment decisions but abs- you know, decipher that information. And I actually see my role as something that's um, much more complete than that. I really think that in order for women to be good investors, they have to have an overall investment strategy that's going to emphasize their total asset management. And so what that means is they really need to put together a comprehensive comprehensive financial plan that starts with a budget. Um, You know, you have to be able to have cash flow in order to be able to save. You have to be utilizing your assets and your liabilities, maximizing that in a way that's going to benefit you and um, not hurt you. 
And it's really a matter of just simply sitting down and taking a look at your overall picture, what your debt is, what your assets are, how those things are allocated, and from there we can form a plan that um, will help you begin to save. But at the very beginning, it all comes down to cash flow and understanding what your budget is. So what you're saying is the, one of the first steps is you've, you've got to take a look and find out how you're spending your money. Exactly. You need to see, you know, do you have additional um, monies every month to be contributing to an IRA? Um, you know, certainly people can contribute to an IRA on an annual basis, but I really recommend that women um, contribute on a monthly basis, sort of like paying a bill where they're putting that money right away into some sort of retirement account, whether it's their individual IRA or something that's through an employer. Uh, those are great ways to save money and to be constantly adding to that those funds. That that really makes a lot of sense. You know, I I know so many women that don't seem to understand where to spend their money. Um, buy a new BMW, um, a, a house that the house payment is so expensive they can't really afford it. So, how do you how do what's a good way to decide? if one should get the new car or fund the IRA? <laughs> well, I always sort of look at it as what is that purchase going to do for me in the long run? Uh, certainly buying a home or something like that is going to provide you with a benefit over a long period of time. Uh, spending hundreds of dollars on clothes or Manolo shoes, you know, how long is that benefit going to last you? And maybe if you spent half of that and put money into a savings account, that would benefit you in the long run. The longer time horizon that you have to save, the better off you will be. And I strongly encourage women that as soon as they enter their working ages to open an IRA and contribute to that IRA at that time. Well, you said that twice, and I, th I think it's, you know, really, really good advice. You had mentioned to me before the opportunity cost of money. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, let's say, for example, um, you are a person that carries, let's say, $25,000 in credit card debt, and your credit card uh, interest rate, you're making your monthly interest payments, and your interest rate is, let's say, at over 19%. And in a savings account at the bank, you've got $30,000 or $40,000 in a, an account that's maybe earning 2 or 3% interest. And people do not understand that by carrying that debt for a long term, you are very – the amount that you're putting towards your principal and actually paying off that debt is going to take a number of years, and it's going to cost you a great deal of money just to carry that debt when in your savings account you have the money to pay off that debt and you can then begin to start saving the money that you would have been paying towards the debt. That and really so, makes a lot of sense. How do you, how do you, how, how should one use a credit card? Well, I actually am a strong believer in paying off that credit card on a monthly basis. Um, you know, not everybody can do that, but I strongly encourage people that if they can spend within their means on a monthly basis, they will be much better off in the long run. It may mean that they can't buy a pair of jeans that month, or it may mean that they have to cut back on a massage or something like that. But look in the future, 20, 30 years, uh, when women are expected to, you know, outlive their husbands, they tend to not remarry. Um, the average age of widowhood is actually quite young. It's in the late 50s. So, you know, my, my, my question that I pose to women is, do you want to be taken care of later on down the road? If you make some adjustments now, you'll be able to do that for yourself. That really makes a lot of sense. And, and you know, I've got a couple of people I'm coaching right now that that first step of of contacting someone seems to be so hard. How do how do they make that first step? What are ways to begin to educate themselves so that they know what to do? Well, you know, there's the very first thing that I want to tell women is that um, statistically, we're looking at probably nine out of ten women will be solely responsible for their financial lives at some point in their life. So. You know, the idea of Prince Charming coming along to, to take care of you is probably not a good bet. Mm -hmm. um, and what you can do is just begin to educate yourself by um, 
picking up some great books that are out there. There are certainly plenty of uh, wonderful books geared towards women out in the marketplace um, that are about money. Uh, there are great websites out there as well to help women um, take a look at their financial plan. And then certainly if you are interested in having somebody to speak with, someone like myself, a professional financial advisor, is also a really great resource. And how, how does one know if somebody's um, a, a really good professional financial advisor? Well, I always uh, suggest that, you know, when you go to interview a financial advisor, you want to talk to them, obviously, about their experience and um, their background and their, their education. That's always a good place to start. But there is a website called um, the National Association of Security Dealers, and at that website, www.nasd.com, there is a section in there called Broker Check, and you can go into there and look up any broker or brokerage firm uh, for the background on the broker as well as any uh, complaints that may have been filed against the broker in which um, monetary damages over $10,000 were awarded, and that would be indicated on that website and that would give you some idea if there were any issues that that broker had had in the past. And what's uh, Wachovia's website? Wachovia's website is www.wachovia, that's W-A-C-H-O-V-I-A dot com. Great. And, there, and there's specific sections for women? Certainly. There are uh, some great tips in there to help women um, look at different um, financial planning tools, um, we have a Wachovia.com women section that will um, help women with small businesses. There's uh, certainly diversity issues. There's a, a tremendous amount of information on the website as well. I really appreciate your time and, and everything you've been saying. And what I've found is when women participate in managing their money, it really changes their confidence besides the outcome in terms of their life financially. And I wonder if you could leave us with some encouragement for women to get get on the move and do something to change what's going on in their lives. Absolutely, Sabrina. I absolutely believe that women have what it takes to take control of their financial lives. Um, one of the best ways that I can put it is if you think about, as a woman, the things that you do and the decisions that you make on your daily base with your purchasing dollar, for example, uh, when you have to go to the grocery store and you have to think about all the things that you need to buy and all the different categories, the meats, the fruits, the this, the that, and how you're going to spend your money and how you're going to allocate that money, those same skills, the skills that we use every single day in managing our households and our children and our family budget are applicable to investments. And you just need to learn the terminology and understand that it's the same concept of diversifying and spreading out that money. And working with a professional advisor, you know, that provides you with an opportunity to talk to somebody and get educated. What I really think women need to do most of all, there are probably about five steps that every woman can start to take right now to take control of their life. What would that be? The first one would be to establish good credit in your own name. Uh, get your own credit card. Get a checking account or a savings account or a tax-deferred um, retirement account. Put money and establish credit in your own name. Um, if you have an employer that offers a tax-deferred retirement plan, absolutely contribute in that. Many employers match your dollars that you set aside. So, you know, what can happen with that over time is that will be compounded growth, and it also decreases your current tax liabilities. Uh -huh. uh, the third thing is invest regularly, and that was what I was saying earlier. Um, when you sit down to pay your monthly bills, set up that you put $100, $200, $1,000, whatever uh, is in line with the cash flow that you have, <clears throat> put money into an account regularly, automatically, monthly. And then the next thing I think is to really create a total financial strategy um, you know, you should have savings. You should have your investments allocated between different asset classes, real uh -huh. estate, uh, stocks, bonds, cash, CDs, so on and so forth. Um, 
Then the, the, the thing that I think is most important is to regularly monitor those investments and rebalance them as necessary. And again, that's where a professional advisor can come in handy. And uh, I think that that's probably the fifth thing is if you don't feel that it's something that you can take on your own, call someone that is a professional advisor and they will help you work through a plan and uh, monitor that throughout the rest of your life. Wow, this is this is incredible. I really appreciate you sharing this with us. And I know we're going to get some other questions, and I'm wondering if you might be available to come back and talk to us again. Absolutely. There's a tremendous amount of information out there to help women. Um, as I said, it is um, an amazing time for women. We are coming into controlling a tremendous amount of wealth. Uh, for example, within the next five years, women are expected to control over $14 trillion, and that's money that's coming through inheritance and divorce and um, marriage so and, and work. So I think it's a great time for women, and uh, the younger that you can start, the better off you will be. That's great. Thank you so much, Renee. Thank you, Sabrina. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining your host, Sabrina Brom, on another Women's Leadership Podcast. If you have questions or comments, you can email her at sabrina at sabrinabrahm.com. Since 1989, Sabrina and her team have helped hundreds of women managers, business leaders, and entrepreneurs with valuable trainings, articles, books, and executive coaching. For additional tips, interviews, and free access to Great Leaders Today mini-course, visit www.womensleadershipsuccess.com.